Welcome to April's Leco Challenge. Today's problem is longest valid parentheses. Given a string containing just the characters open and close parentheses, find the length of the longest valid parentheses substring. Now a valid parentheses is one where the open parentheses is matched by closed parentheses in order. So here we can see the longest valid parentheses is this one, so that's going to be a length of two. And here we're going to find that the longest valid parentheses is four. Now keep in mind that this could actually have open, open, close, close, and that would count also as a valid parentheses. All right, so normally with these valid parentheses problems, uh, usually the approach is to have a stack, and it's fairly trivi trivial to figure out if it's a valid parentheses or not. What we'll do is have a stack and add it, add any open parentheses into that stack, and only when we see a closed parentheses we'll pop it off, and at the very end, if our stack is empty, we know that this whole thing is a valid parentheses, but that's not what we're looking for here, right? We are looking for the longest valid length of a substring here. Uh, so that makes it a little bit trickier. Um, we can't just have a stack to see if this whole thing is a valid parentheses. Well, we could. We could find every single possible substring inside of our string and then run that algorithm. Uh, but that's going to be, I think, n cubed to do that. So it's not very efficient. Now, is there a way that we can do this in one pass using using a stack? Um, but keep track of the longest valid parentheses. So in order to do that, what we're going to have to do is say that we have this example here. We'll create a stack, and this is just going to be a list. And instead of adding every open parentheses here into our stack, uh, that we're going to pop off eventually uh, if we find one that's also a um, closed parentheses. What we'll do is Normally, like you do something like this, right? And then pop it off when, when we see uh, one that looks like that. But that's not what we, what we care about. What we care about is the index number. Um, because say that here we can have every index number uh, stored. If we stored like the index number that we have for every open parentheses, say with like one, and this is gonna be two. Um, well, this example doesn't really work, but say that we added first the index number where we know that we can't have a valid one, so that would start at zero. Um, then we add one that uh, starts off with a open parentheses, and then we can just pop off the one here when we see a closed parentheses. And what we can do is every time we f we pop off and we have one that's a closed parentheses, we will subtract that index number that we were currently on, which would be here two and subtract it with the very last element, um, which is going to have the index number of where we should begin. So that would be two minus zero. So longest length at this point is is going to be two, right? And after that, we can add this one here. That's going to be um, three, and then we pop it off when we find one that closes. We pop this one off, and then we say four minus zero. Now the length is going to be four. And at any point, like say we had one that's not valid here, like like this. Um, that's gonna add here, like this should be now five, and that's gonna allow us to, every time we find one that's valid eventually, we're gonna start here now, we're gonna look back, subtract the index number that we have from five, because that's the only valid parentheses at that point. And every time we're gonna store the max length uh, to make sure that we return only the max number. So hopefully that made sense. Let's start with initializing our stack. And what we'll do is say for index number and p in enumerate s, uh, there's going to be two cases, right? Either it's open or it's closed. So if it's p equals an open parentheses, what we're going to do is just add to our stack the index number. Now, otherwise, if it's a closed parentheses, what we'll do is pop off from our stack um, and we're going to take our index number. Well, it depends on whether there's a stack or not. If uh, there's not a stack, then we will just add this current index to here to keep track of um, at which point it's going to be new. Otherwise, we will store our max, and we can start by initializing that to zero. And the max is now going to equal the max of max. And 
let's see, stack minus one, i minus stack minus one. Finally, at the very end, we just return our max, and that should be it. So let's see if this works. Uh, looks like that works, and I did forget we actually need to add a negative one here for some edge cases. Um, it's not really worth going into too much of that, but we do need to store the negative one in case there are situations where, um, like, it's not enclosed to the very left. Uh, so yeah, this works. It's going to be O of n time complexity, and it's going to be O of one or O of n space, right? So that would be it. This I would say is fairly optimal. Um, there is one more solution I found really smart. So I'm going to also go through that. Um, there is a way to do this in O of n without um, with o of, o of one space, constant space. Uh, to do this, it's basically we have two counters. We're going to have uh, one counting up the closed parentheses and one counting up the open parentheses. Uh, and at any point that we find as we move to the left to right, uh, if we find that the left, the amount of left parentheses equals the right parentheses, then we can just take the amount of right parentheses that we've found so far and then multiply that by two. And that's going to give us the length of how much we have. Now, at any point, if we find that there's more right parentheses than left, then we have to reset that max amount. Uh, so I'll show you what I mean. So say that we have our left and right. Uh, this, aren't, this isn't a pointer. This is just representing the left parentheses and the right parentheses. I can also call this open close. Um, maybe that's better. I'll call it, mm, no, I'll, I'll just call it left and right. Okay, and we'll have max, max here. So what we'll do is say four. Now we don't need to store the index number. We just say four P in S. Uh, what we'll do is if P is equal to open parentheses, we'll increase our left. Uh, otherwise, it's a, it's a closed parentheses, so we'll increase our right. Now, if L equals R, then we're going to store the uh, max of max and R times 2. Otherwise, uh, if R is greater than L, then we actually have to reset our left and right amounts because uh, now we can't count all those previous left and rights that we've already counted. Now we kind of have to like reset this. So after this, we just return our max. Now this works for most cases, but we actually uh, do have situations where like if we had um, like something like this, this this wouldn't actually work because we, we won't count up. Like this will say left, 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 right, right, right. Uh, we know that this part is valid, but this algorithm wouldn't take care of that. So we actually have to move backwards as well uh, to account for the enclosed like, on this side. So uh, that's fairly simple, though. We just need to run the same algorithm. What we do is just make this reversed. Uh, let's see. Now, the, now it's kind of like flipped. So let's say this is going to be... Um, the left and this else is going to be right if L equals R then R times 2 and I believe now this has to be left greater than R then we need to reset so let me make sure this works okay that did not work um, let's see Maybe it'd be better if I flip this like this. That work? Okay. It's my fault. I need to reset that here before we run backwards. Okay, so I'm pretty sure this is working. Let's go ahead and submit it. And there we go. So this also works. It's O of n, although we do it twice, once forward and once backwards. I know we do reversed, but this is also O of n. Um, perhaps this is actually O of n space as well. Um, uh, whatever. Like you could also you can easily use the index number instead if you like. Um, but yeah, I think those two approaches are the most optimal. There are some recursive and DP solutions, but I didn't really like those. I found them more confusing. Hopefully. This explains it pretty well, and yeah, this was not an easy problem. I, I don't know why we're starting off April so uh, 
um, with like such tough problems, but uh, that's the way it goes, I guess. So thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.